what was once a lively tavern now stands abandoned amongst dense clouds of the weirdness. Deserted and eerie, it is as silent as a grave. Come on, take a sip. Do be shy. You can see the man has sobered up for a moment, but after a second or two, he immediately reverts to his former state. I, I have no idea what you're talking about, friend. Come, drink. You feel the fluid burning down your throat and into your stomach, leaving a peculiar iron-like aftertaste. You have no idea what the swill is, but at least one thing was true. You're sure it made you forget something. The man belches loudly. Now we fight. The man finally collapses and disappears into the weirdness. You find a few things on the ground.
Okay, what if we're also echoes of a powerful desire? And <laughs> is there any desire stronger than the urge to live? What if we found a yearning even stronger than that? What would it do to the weirdness around us? What could it be that you think you need? I have to warn you that nothing is free here.
Apologies, but I can't let you in. The man looks at your invitation and silently opens a hatch in the floor. It clearly leads down to a cellar. As you walk down the stairs, you hear weird chants coming from afar. They become louder and louder with every step you take. Then suddenly, you see a group of people in black robes gathered around a stone carved with various markings. Take your place. Do not disturb the ritual. You take the free place. Since you don't know the words, you at least try to hum along to the melody together with the rest of the crowd. At some point, one of the men starts reciting the words of some ritual. He leads that chant, but they end each verse in unison. Lord of the black skies, we invoke thee. Crowned pale king, we invoke thee. Eternal dark sky, we invoke thee. Lord of the night, we invoke thee. Someone throws various mysterious items into a fire. Someone cuts their arm open and drips their blood over the flames. Everything is happening very fast and the chanting continues. Then everything goes black. Unnatural darkness envelops the place. What do you think you're doing, you incredible morons? The men fall to their knees and start praying vigorously. We've summoned you, Lord, to pledge our allegiance and demonstrate our endless servitude. Death snaps its fingers and the man's neck breaks, quite visibly, in seven different places. It's always the same with you, you idiotic beings. Always the same. You give them life, and they'll find a way to screw it up. Death snaps its fingers again, and another man falls to the ground. You forced me to come here and pay attention to you before your scheduled time, and now you say you worship me? That's rich. Death looks around and notices you. And what are you doing here? Did you go completely nuts, and I somehow didn't notice? Death chuckles. Probably. It's probably a chuckle. You know, there's really no telling with these immortal beings. You notice that the cultists are still kneeling with their faces touching the ground, all trembling in fear. Listen, I can't have that. It's not like humans are the only creatures dying in this world. I'm busy. I'll tell you what. Normally, I'd just get it over with and be on my way. But since you're here, the choice is yours. Should I get rid of these insufferable beings? Or should I spare them? As you wish. But I know the type. They won't stop fooling around with this kind of magic. It's on you to make sure I'm never summoned here again. I'll make it easy for you. Here, with this and certain ingredients, you'll be able to summon things. Things which are not me. They will look real, but they won't be real. They won't be able to kill you. Study them. Fight them. Do what you want. Now I have to go. Death disappears. The cultists slowly rise, unsure of exactly what happened. Then they start thanking you for saving their lives. You give them the grimoire and once again explain in excruciating detail that they're forbidden from ever summoning death again.
Something moves at the edge of your sight. Something small and humanoid. With your weapon ready, you move deeper into the woods. Then you hear a squeaky voice coming from the darkness. Quite unique you are. A small, pale and seemingly ancient woman emerges from the shadows. She looks at you with a mysterious smile and a keen gaze. Nobody has come to see me in a long time. Well, the one thing I certainly am is old. Perhaps as old as time itself. But it doesn't matter. Want some candy? Her gesture clarifies that by candy, she means the small creature, vaguely resembling an octopus, which she clutches in her hand. I knew it. You're just like the others. That's a test for every creature I come across. He is my favorite being in all of creation. He doesn't talk much, but I'm fond of his presence. You shall certainly not eat him, but I feel that you'll be stuck in this place for a long time. You might learn some manners eventually. The woman hides her hands behind her back. Now, I have something for you. Pick a hand. 